On July 19, 1987, Rick Cerrone would step onto the mound for his first ever pitching appearance in Major League Baseball. You might be thinking that he was some sort of young prospect who had finally broken into the majors, and this will be the story of his desperate attempt to keep his roster spot. But those of you who are familiar with the 80s Yankees might recognize that name and realize that Rick Cerrone is not a pitcher. The score of the game he's entering is 18-3. The Yankees have offered up Cerrone as a sacrifice to the baseball gods. But despite that, he felt excited before stepping onto the mound. He knew this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Cerrone would be able to join the short list of names who have pitched for a major league team. It must have been a surreal experience. What did the man himself have to say about it? When asked how he felt on the mound, he kept it pretty short and sweet, saying that it was... Wait, what? After everything I said about this being such a perfect opportunity for Rick Cerrone, this almost doesn't read like a real quote. But what he said reveals an immutable truth about pitching. When you're on that mound, you're all alone. There is no one else but you. Sure, there's fielders surrounding the pitcher and fans cheering and jeering at every play, but it's not really the physical loneliness that gets to you. When the pitcher makes a mistake or has an errant throw, there's nobody else to blame. The pressure faced when stepping up the pitch is unlike anything else in sports. Cerrone followed up his one-word answer with another simple but effective illustration of this fact, saying, it's lonely out there. A catcher could barely handle the pressure from pitching once in a game that was already lost by the time he was handed the ball. Just imagine how scary it must be to have to go out and face that pressure every five days. You have to be superhuman. Luckily for baseball, there are plenty of superhumans out there who are ready to take the mound. Cliff Lee was an absolute star during his 13-year career as a starting pitcher. Although he didn't start out great, he was one of those rare players that never seemed to stop getting better. He aged like a fine wine. During the first six seasons of his career, he was mediocre on a good day. His 4.64 ERA and 4.59 FIP during that time don't exactly stand out by any means. It seemed like he was bound to be on the fringes for most of his career, if he was even able to hold on there. However, he was never going to let those poor performances last. He was going to make a name for himself. His career was looking like it was going nowhere, but he was able to recover from arguably the worst season of his career, at least in terms of ERA, in 2007, and transition to arguably one of his best and win the Cy Young Award in 2008. And what's crazy is that this accomplishment may actually be more impressive than it sounds. Pitchers are handed one of the biggest burdens in baseball. Every single play, Every home run, every error, every bloop single into left center field starts at the pitcher. They act as the control tower for the entire team. If the pitcher falls, so too does the team that they're trying to lead. Lee had to have all that on his shoulders while also attempting to fix the myriad flaws in his pitching. In 2011, Cliff Lee threw three straight shutouts, an accomplishment that Philadelphia hadn't seen since 1950 and that all of America hasn't seen since. There must be so much going on in your head while you're attempting to do something so historic. A couple weeks later, a reporter asked him what he was thinking about when closing out the final game of that streak against Boston. His answer was very straightforward. This statement demonstrates, in very few words, what makes Cliff Lee, and a lot of other MLB pitchers, so different from someone like you or me. He was built for the show. To someone like Rick Cerrone, who isn't familiar with the mound, being in the shoes of a pitcher, even if just for an inning, is terrifying. You suddenly have the fate of the game in your hands, and that can be very difficult for many to stomach. But Lee doesn't just stomach being a pitcher. He relishes the control he is given in that position.
not everyone can control the games they're put into. Patrick Corbin is probably the worst pitcher in MLB over the last two seasons. He leads the pitching staff of arguably the worst team in baseball, so I guess in a way he's representing them perfectly. But yeah, his pitching has gotten really ugly since 2021. From 2021 to 2022, his ERA sits at a staggering 6.05 figure, good for the second highest in the league. High, in this case, not being a good thing. On a team that has had a consistently atrocious pitching staff, ranked seventh in terms of ERA in 2021 and second in 2022, his numbers still look like outliers. His baseball reference war during that two-year span was negative 3.6 which means that he was essentially removing as much value from the Nationals as Jamison Talon added to the Yankees during that same time period. His pitching is honestly miserable to watch. Even when you're watching as a fan of an opposing team, it can be painful to see him get beat up on as much as he does. Corbin can't control the game like Lee, which winds up putting him at the whims of not just the opposing batters, but also his own team's defense. The Nationals had negative 50 outs above average as a team in 2022. That's dead last in the league, and not by a close margin either. Ouch. That's what hurts so much about Corbin's struggles. It feels like it's completely out of his hands. Most of the time, he feels good, and his pitches look like they're moving well, but things just never come together for him. After a game against the Diamondbacks where Corbin once again fell apart, this time at the hands of a Ketel Marte home run, he seemed like he was at a complete loss for words. On Ketel Marte! And the Diamondbacks have opened things up. It's 4-0. How does he keep doing this to himself? How does Patrick Corbin step onto the mound every day to almost certain annihilation? What drives him to do that? Despite maybe not being so superhuman in terms of ability, Corbin is superhuman in his own way. Just like Lee, he views a seemingly complex and intimidating job as something very simple. It doesn't seem like much from the outside looking in, but Patrick Corbin is doing something really impressive. He is willing to bear the monumental burden of being a pitcher, despite the fact that his hard work just kind of doesn't pay off. There are a lot of people who have already given up on him. Plenty have written him off as another addition to the list of bad contracts in MLB history. But Corbin doesn't let that get to him, because he hasn't given up on himself. Patrick Corbin finds himself in the loneliest place on earth every five days. And every five days, he is going to take another step towards conquering that place, and finally making it his own again. All he needs to do is find some solid ground and begin walking forward.